Well, as we are quickly approaching Soundwave 2014, it's been a hot topic for many years about uh, having more Australian bands added to the bill. And of course, that uh, wish was certainly granted with uh, a numerous uh, amount of great Australian heavy music bands added to the bill. And this is one of them certainly uh, spent more time outside of the country last year, uh, but they are back and will be on uh, Australian soil, tearing it up across the country for Soundwave 2014. We do have frontman CJ from Thy Art Is Murder. G'day, CJ. Welcome to uh, andrewhogue.com. Thanks, Andrew. How are you, man? Stoked to be here. No worries, and uh, it's good to have you back in the country after uh, a whirlwind jaunt of uh, touring. And the band certainly has come in leaps and bounds over the last three years, or even two, in fact, uh, especially with the, the release of the Hate record. And uh, just tell us a bit about how you've sort of, uh, you and the rest of the band, have uh, dealt with the superstardom uh, across the world. Uh, it's kind of hard, man, like, um, hard to say, really, like, uh, nothing has really changed us personally, like, uh, our, our personalities or anything, but definitely in the last two years, we've spent most of our time abroad in Europe and Canada, America, New Zealand, everywhere, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a dream come true with the, um, propulsion of, of hate, it's really catapulted us into where we kind of want to be as far as musicians and we're just fucking super stoked that we're touring so much, especially overseas where metal's a bit more, um, you know, uh, uh, enjoyed, I guess, uh, overseas, especially Europe and America, people are, are crazy for it, you know, it, it, people are lining up an hour and a half before doors open just to get in before it sells out and it's just been a fucking dream come true this whole 2013 especially doing so many tours abroad and yeah it's it's mind-blowing we're, we're super stoked on, on how hate has been received and how people and our fans just keep growing every day now it's, it's fucking awesome now let's talk a bit about the australian scene of course uh, it is renowned for at times the tall poppy syndrome when a band gets successful and they leave australia take it to the world uh sometimes a flack can be pretty rife what is your take on the Australian scene now that you've seen the world in a different uh, sense, touring everywhere and, and then coming back? Do you think the Australian scene needs to possibly pull its socks up a bit? I, I, I don't really know, to be honest. Like, um, I think at first when we started going overseas, when we did a Aussie tour um, uh, early June with Cattle Decapitation, we coughed a bit of shit from, I guess, more so traditional metal guys because they didn't think that it was deserving of us that we would headline over Cattle Decap um, because we weren't, you know, a traditional death metal band. But, um, you know, that that was only kind of, you know, a bit of shit we copped from anyone. And it wasn't that many people, it was just a couple of dudes. And that's what was really successful for every band that was on that package as far as Versus Crown, King Parrot, um, Cattle D and ourselves. Like, the tour was fucking excellent. Like, we had the best shows. Everything was really, really good. It was probably the biggest tour that we've headlined in Australia um, as far as attendance and popularity, I guess. And um, it, it, it's been cool. Like, uh, in the last two years when we come home and we do do tours or even just the one-off shows, all of our fans are telling us how, how stoked they are and how proud, are they, how proud of um, us that they are because, you know, we're getting outside of our country. We're playing overseas. And I think... Um, uh, like you said, with support poppy syndrome, I have seen that um, with other bands where people try and bring them down. But with us, it just seems to be propelling us forward. Like, people are stoked every time we're overseas on Instagram and Facebook, always hearing fans about saying, you know, come back to Australia and play. We miss you guys. Or bring this band that you're touring with back with us. We'd love to see you guys play with these guys in Australia. And, you know, it. it uh, it, it's been really awesome. Like uh, Australian fans have stuck by us, even though we're not touring um, as much as we used to in Australia. And um, you know they're super supportive. Like I always get inboxes on Facebook from fans that I've met once or twice or even never before, saying like, you know, how inspirational it is um, for them that our band's doing so well, and you know they want to do the same thing as us. Like in the future when their band develops and grows a bit more, so. You know, it, it's kind of like we're doing one for the underdogs, and I, I, I know that Australia is 
one of the biggest countries as far as being an underdog because we're so far away from everybody. We have such a small population. Um, but people don't understand that the, the quality of music that comes out of this country is fucking phenomenal. Like, every time we're in a different country, people are always talking about Aussie bands, and they can rattle off five or six names all the time. So the rest of the world is actually watching Australia as far as developing bands, and, and it's really, really reassuring that, you know, we're doing something right, and I, I would definitely... Um, Tell, I'd love to tell other bands out there that are thinking about doing the, the trip over to Europe or the States to definitely save that, you know, a big lot of money to go and tour overseas because it's going to open your eyes as a musician and it's going to open up your fan base. And I really think Australian bands should all stick behind each other like how Parkway, Parkway Drive have done for other bands, taking them overseas and trying to get our music exported over there because people are actually watching us and we have such an array of amazing bands people really need to push the australian music overseas so we can take on the rest of the world let's talk a bit about as you mentioned uh the bands on the bill where you play with cattle decapitation and things like that uh you know i've noticed and i'm sure you probably have over the last couple of years the the sort of really picky segregation that's happening in in the heavy music scene especially the extreme scene when if you put both bands together and no one saw image pictures of, of uh, any of the members, I'm sure most people would actually go, yeah, that band sounds brutal because, again, most bands, uh, you know, like you guys and, and uh, there's uh, Cattle Decapitation, etc., are very much on the same uh, ballpark as far as uh, extreme music. But I've noticed a, a distinct sort of segregation when it comes to an image as opposed to uh, music. And I'm sure you're probably not a huge fan of being slapped with the deathcore label uh, as well. What's your take on, on on the sort of segregation? Have you noticed that uh, when it comes to playing shows, considering that bands, even like yourselves with Psychroptic, uh, are still very much on the same uh, ballpark musically, but there seems to be some sort of division when it comes to, uh, you know, fans sort of judging the band's image first rather than music. Have you noticed any of this? Uh, we have a little bit. Um, it really hasn't been something that has been like... A, you know, a significant problem, but we do, we have noticed it in Australia um, a little bit, like on the cattle decap run. Um, the funniest kind of thing that we had was um, when we were in Germany, um, there was like a group of guys, like three or four dudes, you know, typical black metal, test metal looking dudes, long hair, black jeans, black boots, black fucking everything. And um, Sean, our bass player, and I were talking to these guys and they were saying to us, to our faces, um, that we were disrespectful to death metal uh, <laughs> and that... Uh, that you know, you know, because we wear Nike shoes and our tattoos aren't all fucking black and death metal orientated tattoos, and the way we dress and you know, our skinny jeans and shit, and it's fucked. Like it, it's it's it it just that was a really frustrating time because you know they were saying that they were a traditional death metal band. They only play in their garage and they only record themselves, and you know that we were disrespecting a style of music and. We're not trying to be deathcore or death metal or black metal or, or anything. We're just simply doing what we want to do. We are a metal band, whatever fucking pigeonhole or genre you want to put us in doesn't really phase us. Deathcore, um, as a word, we, we don't really care about it. Like, we wouldn't say we're deathcore. We do say sometimes that we're deathcore only because that's what the majority call us because we have death metal sections with breakdowns. So then when you have a breakdown, it automatically puts you into the core element. So you put the death metal, the death with the core and then become <laughs> deathcore. But you know, like we have a lot of friends in big bands overseas, uh, like Chelsea Green and stuff like that, and and they're a deathcore band and Suicide Silence, and they're a deathcore band apparently, and you know it's, and, but we're still a little different to to these bands, and they're always different to ourselves and other bands. But at the end of the day, we're an Australian metal band, and if you like metal and you're proud of Australians, you should support us. And if you don't like our music, that's fine too. But don't push it on us because we wear fucking Nikes and. You know, we fucking, some of the boys wear flat hats or something. We're, we're not trying to be anyone. We're just being ourselves. We want to play the most brutal, brutal, heavy, destructive, violent, fucking evil music that we can. We're not trying to beat anybody. We do want to be number one, but we're not trying to, to be anybody that we're not. Like, we're just doing what we want to do. 
and you know every now and then not that often recently we cop a bit of shit but um we don't really care man like if if people are gonna say what we are or whatever if they like us they like us if they don't we don't give a fuck well it sounds like a lot of people do like you because you are on the Soundwave festival coming up shortly for 2014 and uh what's your uh plans for the uh the whole tour and any bands you're looking forward to actually sharing the stages with because as you know you've done some lengthy uh european and u.s tours uh so i'm sure you've definitely uh, rubbed shoulders with some uh, pretty damn uh heavy other uh other heavy acts which bands are you looking forward to seeing the most for uh Soundwave this year well as just as myself and as our band we're looking forward to uh like hanging out with dillinger escape plan they're really good friends of ours we met them like six months ago or four months five months ago on the um fuck oh i forgot the name of the tour now uh, the summer slaughter in the states and we just you know after the first week we just become super close uh with those guys and m- me especially with uh benny Weinman and uh liam wilson their good bass playing guitarist and i'll be just i'll be glued to the hip me and ben will probably be walking around Soundwave holding hands as we've discussed in emails so um i'll be with benny Weinman from dillinger the whole time and we'll probably be checking out bands like uh mastodon corn um, a day to remember, big fans of us and we're big fans of theirs. We haven't really met. We've, we're hanging out with their bass player in Florida uh, a couple of weeks ago and he's a cool dude. And, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of bands. Corn. I want to see Corn again. I love Corn. Uh, Gojera, Suicide Silence, Black Dahlia Murder, Whitechapel. Um, yeah, that's, that's a bands that I can think of at the moment, but, um, yeah, there's probably another 10 or 15 bands I want to check out. I just can't remember the, all their names at the moment. Well, it's a massive bill. It's always a, an absolute uh, treat to be in amongst, uh, of course, other metal brethren. We can get you to, uh, I guess, say a couple last words to uh, the Australian fans and possibly a few festival tips as uh, as well. Okay. Uh, festival tips for Soundwave 2014. Drink plenty of water. Try and keep your bottles so you don't have to pay $5 a bottle of water. Go near taps all the time. Um, and if you're taking drugs, make sure that you drink twice as much water. Um, look after each other. Stay out of the sun. We're plenty of sunscreen. Support all the bands, especially the Aussie bands. And um, make sure that you don't hurt anybody intentionally. I guess that's thanks for listening to me and Andrew Hogue today's interview I'm CJ from My Art is Murder and I'm going to go and start getting my fishing gear ready for tonight very good we can get you to choose your favourite track from the uh, the hate record oh man that's a tough one um, I'm going to go Shadow of Eternal Sin locked in let's check it out now here on andrewhogue.com look out for The Art is Murder on Soundwave 2014